Welcome back, everyone, to Stock Market Weekly. I am your host, Evan Medeiros. And if you are new here, this is the show where we break down the most important trends, price action, and noteworthy moves happening across financial markets. This episode for the week of April the 12th, 2024. Let's get right into it here. Top story, Dow Jones officially 5% from its all-time highs. It's a relatively minor correction. I don't know if we can even call it a correction, a pullback at this point, but it is notable. It is the largest that we've seen, the most, you know, sort of sustained pullback and selling that we've seen in this market for about four or five months. Bank earnings were out sort of officially kicking off earnings season, and they were certainly some of the reason the Dow Jones was so weak. JP Morgan in particular, really sort of dragging things down on Friday. Earnings weren't so bad, but Clearly, the reaction to them was worse. So we're going to look at some of those charts in this week's video. We've got bond yields now hitting new cycle highs here as inflation continues uh, to show stickiness here. And the market is kind of getting into this mode, continues to, to really continue down this path of delaying their expectations around when the Fed might start to make their rate cuts. And I think the market is really looking at September now at this point before they uh, can, you know, really see the, the, the Fed moving. And the NASDAQ 100, we're going to talk about that. We think we got a real interesting sort of setup here that you won't want to miss. So stick around. Charts coming right now. All right, we've got some charts in front of us. TC2000, that is the charting platform we're going to be using throughout this video. We are builders, we're developers for this platform. So if you are a user and if you need something created for you or you just need some education, head to our website, thetraderist.com. Check us out, see if we can be of assistance. I'd love to work with you if you have a custom project that you need built out for TC2000. And for you new users, uh, we do have, I believe, believe still going a referral in the description of this video that will get you 20 25 dollars off last i saw based on uh the referral link in this video to start a subscription so check that out and let's get into the numbers here so right hand side one week returns you can see everything was negative this week and pretty firmly so dow jones was along with the Russell 2000, the biggest underperformer, the biggest loser this week, down to two and a quarter to almost 3%. You can also see that all of the major US averages now are in red territory over the past month. Take a look at the volatility indices. This is one of the notable moves this week. We saw pretty good jumps uh, up about one point, one and a half, one and a quarter points here in the VIX for uh, S&P, and then also the NASDAQ vol crossing over that 20 threshold. We're going to look at those charts in just a little bit. Let's take a look at sector breakdowns here. You can see that uh, best performing was still negative this week, but the best relative outperformer was actually technology down just a half a percent, followed by consumer discretionary and consumer staples. In terms of the worst performing sectors, financials, like we talked about at the top of the show, really sliding hard on Friday. Of course, those earnings, like we said, starting to trickle out from the big big major banks. Materials and healthcare were closely in the second and third worst performing sectors. Now, let's jump over to our sector grid here with our custom smart trend filter indicator applied. And this really helps us smooth out the noise. So we hide price action. We just plot this indicator. This indicator is available for TC2000. It's also available for TradingView. You can get it on our website. But this helps us just really clearly measure path of least resistance who's in control based on price and volume and some price action relationships. And now you're seeing that we are getting more sell signals into the mix here. So if we zoom in, you can see now financials started to produce a sell signal on Thursday of this week. We also see real estate, which continues to see weakness sell signals followed by some yellow dots. 
healthcare, biotech, consumer staples, all of these sectors now are in this daily downtrend where we are seeing more sellers or sellers in control. This is the most that we've seen now throughout all of 2024. If we look at financials, for instance, this is the first time on Thursday we saw a sell signal produced going all the way back to January of this year. So January 16th, 17th, we had a little bit of a stumble and some sell signals and some volatility, but this has been in a very clear orderly uptrend for a very long time uh, until of course now this week. So something we want to continue to pay attention to. There's lots of markets now that are basically in this yellow transition state where it's telling you to pay attention, don't really have a lot of evidence one direction or the, or the other uh, that speaks to really technology, con communication services, right? Industrials, they're all starting to weaken up, but not really move into that sell signal just yet. And that really puts us to market breadth, something we look at every single week, which is our 52 week highs, 52 week lows ratio. And once again, we can see this is actually now the weakest that we've seen going all the way back to I guess arguably January of this year. So we had this, this remember the start to January where we saw the sell off in the NASDAQ 100. It was a real kind of tough open to 2024. And this is where we had breath sort of, you know, lopsided in, in kind of weakening in, in terms of the, uh, you know, favoring kind of sellers versus the buyers. And we're kind of now back at that same positioning here. We saw the number of 52 week highs dry up here late in the week, and we did get an uptick in the number of stocks hitting 52 week lows on Friday. So this is something, again, we're going to come back. We're going to want to pay attention to this because this here, as it skews more on a longer term time horizon, I don't think we're day trading this indicator per se, but this ratio is a more intermediate term current of where the strength is and if there is strength underneath the U.S. stock market. And so for now, we give the benefit of the doubt still to the buyers as the ratio on a cumulative basis over over the past few weeks is still positive, but we are starting to get now this, 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 you know, flip in the ratio over the short term. So let's keep a close eye on this. Uh, you can see the NYSE composite index now breaking down or, or continuing to sort of pull back here from its former highs. Now, if we take a moment here, IBD Investors Business Daily, they are a sponsor of this show. So thank you IBD for making the show possible. This is their top 10 from their IBD 50 list. And so you can see this, this list here was trying to hold up. We had ARM Holdings, we had NVIDIA that were trying to close positive on the week. In fact, they did. Uh, rest of their stocks did close down, but there's been some high performing winners here. This is a list that I would you know look through now for relative strength, look for stocks setting back up You know, as we continue to develop in this potential market correction. There's links in the description of this video to get access to their digital subscription, which will get you access to their IBD 50. So check it out after you watch this video. That moves us to commodities here. And you can see commodities have been all the rage. They've been on fire, really up, up, only uh, over the past few months and up aggressively. And for the most part, commodities were still green this week. Everything was working in this space. Silver, top of the list here with the US dollar in the second spot. So dollar index was really strong, but so were commodities, gold, oil, um, natural gas even. Bitcoin was down slightly this week. Uh, oil was actually down just slightly to finish the week. So good action still in the commodities, but as we'll look at a little bit later, it might be time to cool off a little bit on some of them. Now, the pressure here is, tre is treasury yields, the index here across different maturities, you can see are all moving back up towards kind of cycle highs, the highest levels that we've seen in the past five or six months, the 10 year treasury yield briefly eclipsing over 4.6%, then sort of settled back down around 4.5% on Friday. So this, of course, here is this narrative where rate cuts are getting kind of pushed out into the future longer. We're going to stay higher for longer out of the Fed. That is the market expectations right now. And they're certainly doing a good job at repricing some of uh, the Treasury yields. So let's take a look at some price action now. We've got through the data. This is the S&P 500. This is the cash settled market, and this is a weekly time frame. So you can see right off the bat, we've got our first sort of back-to-back -back, um, week 
weekly down weeks and we finally got some follow through below the lows of the prior week. So the S&P 500, when you look at it on this time frame, shows just how minor and contained and shallow that the pullback currently is. So, um, you know, when we look at just the November to two weeks ago rally of 27 and a half percent, we are still very much in kind of the upper end of this range. So that brings us down to the daily chart where we can take a little bit closer look at some of these support levels that we can pay attention to. And really the market is starting to come back down to this March consolidation zone. This is around 5,100, just under 5,100 for the S&P 500. Uh, we almost got there on Friday's session, but you know, it looks like we kind of want to get Get back to this 51 50 50 area and just kind of see if dip buyers step back into this general zone now again when we look at the highs to where we are right now we're only three percent from our prior from our all-time high so you ask the question now well what if we do get uh, another, you know, what if we do get a, a 5% correction? Well, that's going to be closer to this 5,000 zone. Oops, that's the wrong indicator. It's going to be closer to this 5,000 zone. And that does coincide with this open kind of gap back here from uh, late February. So if we are to, you know, kind of project and just think ahead here, well, if the S&P 500 pulls back 5%, that gets us to around uh, 5,000. If we go 7%, well, you're going to be closer to the 49, which is kind of the February lows down here. So there's some pre-planning you can do to start to think like, well, if we get some garden variety correction where even the healthiest markets, you get five and 7% corrections, then you've got some more pain ahead. Now, it doesn't mean we have to get there, but it at least keeps you open-minded as to where this market may be destined to. The Dow Jones might be the canary sort of leading everything as it is already in a 5% pullback. So, for the S&P 500, what I would be looking for at this point is, you know, in the short term, can the market stabilize? Can we find support up around 5100, which is essentially the March, uh, you know, congestion zone? And can we stabilize there? Can the market stay patient enough while we get through earnings season, which really doesn't hit, uh, you know, heat up for another two weeks, frankly, when a lot of the big influential heavy mega cap tech companies start reporting at the end of April. So can the market hang in there in anticipation of those earnings without breaking down? What does some of the upcoming inflation data look like? We've got a couple of reports, obviously not no jobs data yet, but PCE and some other things that the market will start to look at. So can we stabilize without breaking down? That's going to be kind of the, the next thing that I would be looking for. For now, there's some chop. There's some weakness. We broke below the uh, big range day that we saw back on April the 4th. I think that was a good short-term level to pay attention to. Generally speaking here, though, I like when there's a little bit of fear in the market, right? I don't want to jump right to the – we will jump right to the VIX now. I mean, we almost got – we almost tagged – getting up towards 20 intraday here on Friday. This to me, I think is a good thing. Ultimately, if you take that longer term perspective, you need some fear and uncertainty in the markets. You can't have everyone on one side of the boat. And we're in the process right now of creating a little bit of fear, maybe very warranted fear that has more to go. But for now, uh, you're getting the mismatch of expectations here. You're getting some uncertainty. You're getting some folks that are scared and reaching for protection. So the S&P 500 back to that chart again let's see let's let the dust settle a little bit let's build some watch lists let's look at stocks that are holding up strong these are all you know time frame specific strategy stuff but things that we can think about as traders now if we go to the russell 2000 for instance i mean the structure here is very different. Again, you know, we've talked about this chart quite a bit here. This still hasn't really rotated out and broken out above this two two year or so range. We failed up around 210. We pulled back. And again, the bigger, broader level is still down around 190 or so. So the Russell 2000 feels like it wants to maybe take a trip back down to the lower end of this range. I would still say that this is the big wide range for the Russell 2000. It's about 10% range. We're still holding above, you know, 
the top end of this big November to call it January or March rally that we saw. So again, structure is different here, but the small cap index was up around almost 30% in the fourth quarter going into the first quarter. And now we're still kind of just working all of that off at the top end of a longer term range. So I still like the potential for small caps, but we got to probably look another you know month or so down the line before price action firms up enough and eventually sees more rotation. So Perhaps that comes with the first, you know, rate cut out of the Fed. Uh, but it's still, you know, to me, looks like we need some more time here in the Russell 2000. NASDAQ 100, this is something that I think is actionable and worth paying attention to. This would sort of be the chart of the week uh, if, if we had that kind of uh, thing here in these videos. But we've got some pretty good pent up sideways ranges now and levels to pay attention to. The NASDAQ 100 has gone absolutely nowhere for the past month and a half, almost two months at this point. It's been trading in the same, you know, let's call it three and a half percent range. Lots of overlapping supply here. This is a classic kind of sideways consolidation. This is volatility compression. This is uncertainty. This is folks placing bets on both sides of the tape. And this leads to expansion. This leads to a breakout. And we want to be on watch for that. Now, again, a lot of these big companies have earnings in two or so weeks. So can we stay contained in this range until that point? That's something we want to pay attention to. But all I know is below 433, if we start getting convincing closes below that area, I think you do want to brace for cover and look to uh, either hedge up or, or you know, do what you need to do to manage risk. If this market starts to roll below this 433 zone, again, there's that big juicy open gap from late February. Uh, let's see how that handles it. For now, uh, we're still range bound. So we could just as easily at this point break out above 448 and start you know racing to new highs in a very short amount of time so let's keep an open mind here for now the nasdaq 100 kind of racking up a few distribution days over the past month or so but still very much sideways and contained so that's the way i'm looking at things right now i would be paying it very close attention to this chart though because as that moves you should start to get um just a lot more uh signal out of the market more trendiness out of the market depending on which way this breaks now let's we talked about the vix let's take a look at semi conductors because i think this is a, again a pretty equally important part of the market kind of sub breaking down technology a little bit i mean this looks much better uh but it's still quite pent up here right this over the past three weeks or so has gone very sideways and there's lots of high flyers lots of volatility lots of earnings growth and expectations built into this type of uh group in the market so Let's keep an eye on how semis resolve here. 230 to the upside, things look good. If we start breaking below 215 and these March lows, then it gets a lot more dicey. So semiconductors, just like tech, I think are worth watching. Financials, right? We talked about this at the top of the show. I mean, look, this has had a monster move to the upside. Uh, again, you know, zooming out, getting perspective, 35% up in basically five months. And now we're, we're pulling back 5%, right? That perspective really kind of just shows you that, look, this can still be a very structurally healthy market in a longer term time horizon, but we got to cool off and pull back and shake things up eventually. And that eventually is finally come here uh, to, to, to right in front of our face. So XLF in pullback mode. Let's just wait for the dust to settle here. No reason to be a hero. It could easily come back down another two, three, four percent and again still be quite orderly here. But JP Morgan, like we talked about, seeing some of the heaviest volume that it's seen in quite some time. Again, it's had a big move up, open gap down, sold off, closed at the lows of the session here. So clearly a little bit of a, a trend break and um, needs some time to kind of heal itself. So 
that's kind of the outlook there on banks. Apple was another story that we didn't put in the top of the headlines here, but Apple was up 4% this week. And, you know, thank goodness it was because that NASDAQ 100 probably would have been looking like it was would be about breaking down at this point. But Apple had a very strong Thursday, Friday, heavy volume coming in, big outperformance here for its MAG7 uh, kind of cohort. And uh, once again, Apple is, is kind of finding uh, support here in the upper one. 160. So let's keep an eye on it. Uh, big up week, you know, good volume coming in. Doesn't report earnings until the beginning of May, uh, but certainly some good relative strength developing over those past two trading sessions. Now, um, what else do I have for markets? I think that's actually a lot of what I wanted to cover. We talked about the VIX. Oh, we didn't look at gold yet. So gold, very heavy volume. I mean, take a look at the volume that printed here in the GLD ETF today, 30 million shares. You got to go all the way back uh, to 2022, but you're still in, you know, very sort of rarefied territory when you get that much uh, shares trading and a dollar volume amount is really even putting it higher given how much higher gold is than it was uh, back here, although I guess it did blow off around this 190 zone. But nevertheless, big kind of outside reversal. This might be the cap here for gold, just in the very short term, at least some profit taking a reversal. Uh, big move, though. I mean, gold is trading like a tech stock. It has got some serious momentum behind it. And this is kind of why we built one of our layouts here. This is our um, rolling returns layout. And if you look GLD on here, Again, you can see a couple of things. I mean, just the ATR moves today really off the charts. This sometimes can mark good turning points when you start to see big blow off moves like this. But take a look here at just this monster, um, you know, rolling returns uptrend here as momentum is built. You can look at a weekly chart as well. There's been serious strength here for uh, GLD. So a little bit of cooling off makes sense. Um, wouldn't necessarily advocate shorting anything, but cooling off if you have a position um, that makes sense to me. And I think that will be a good place to leave it. Lots to think about this weekend and uh, prepare ourselves for next week. Again, earnings season coming up, and I think the market is going to be waiting on that, going to be waiting on more inflation data. And that's kind of the big stuff you know, really, you know, controlling this market narrative, at least at this time. So that's all I got. Thanks as always for tuning in. Hope the video was helpful. We've got lots of links in the description of this video. Hope you have a great weekend ahead of you and we'll see you back here next Friday. Take care.